Hi, this is Ahmed from Antigua Audio. Our channel is focused on audio recording and music production. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more content like this. And don't forget to check our website for more stuff like this. This video is going to cover an extremely easy to use plugin that is concerned with denoising audio enhancement on audio restoration. Dealing with unwanted background noise can be a real challenge and a time consuming process. Thus, having a reliable noise removal tool in your arsenal is absolutely essential. Clarity VX Pro from Waves promises performance and intuitive functionality as claimed by them on their website. We are going to test the boundaries and capabilities of this plugin and find out the extremes that it could go to. We will thoroughly test its strengths and weaknesses as well as anything in between. In this review, we based on real-life audio samples with different types of background noises. So this way we can accurately evaluate the plugin's ability to handle a variety of challenging noise scenarios. By the end of this video you will have a comprehensive understanding of this tool and be able to make an informed decision about incorporating it into your workflow. So without any further ado let's dive into it and see how it performs on the rigorous review process. I have prepared a few examples here. They will go from basic noises that could be easily addressed all the way to extreme noises of different types and duration. Let's see the first one. So this is going to be our first example. There's quite some noise going in the background. And um, maybe it's not too extreme, but we're going to see how the plugin performs. And based on that, we're going to be upscaling it and taking it to the next level every time. Of course, this is a little bit more extreme, but this is just to push it to its old boundaries and see how it performs. So as I said in the introduction, this is a very simple and easy and intuitive process. It's just as simple as that, as moving this knob in the middle all the way to like the end. It just removed all of the noise. There are more advanced controls that we're going to be discussing in just a second. As you can see, this knob is divided into two sections, which is the voice and ambience on the other end. Which means that if I just take it to the other end like that, it's only going to be keeping the ambience and just cancelling my voice and we could listen to that in a second and it's just amazing how it's able to identify my speech and the noises around me and separate both of them let's take a listen So it's really interesting how this algorithm was able to take away my voice and just keep the ambience. This might have been an easy one for it, but we're going to really give it a run for its money in the upcoming samples as well. For the next audio recordings, I'll be using the advanced control settings. This process will still be as simple as it gets, but with a few additional tweaks that could be useful. So here I'll be pressing this button to show the advanced controls. And as you can see, quite a few new settings have shown up. We will go through them individually to understand what they are and what they do. Here is the neural network reset button which resets the AI algorithm, if you will, separating between the previous signal input and the next one. And then we have different profiles or approaches to the denoising process. It could be broad one, which will keep the voice detail and secondary speech as well as Broad 1 HF, which does the same but also preserves the high frequencies. There's this Broad 2 profile, which will only prioritize the main voices, and this is better used for severe ambience. There's also this Echo mode, which uses less CPU and mainly focuses on the dialogues and speeches enhancement. There's the audio analysis methods, single or double. With the double, it analyzes the left and right channels separately, which would be better for dissimilar ambience and different noises, but on the expense of more CPU usage, of course. And then there's the sensitivity, which will be either normal or high, in terms of a ratio between the voice signal and the noise. The reflections knob would try to restore the natural reflections which might have been present in the original audio. For instance, if this audio was recorded in like a large room and there was like echo or reverb in it, it might try to restore that as well. But I personally preferred to add my own reverb separately in the post-production and not go through the trouble of adjusting it with this, this plugin because it might introduce artifacts. So for this example, just going to be simple within the household. 
So for example, someone is watching TV in the background or YouTube or something, and it's just gonna a little bit too loud. So I'm just gonna be reading something and let's see if it's gonna work. Through the ups and flows of life, we encounter various noises that threaten to disrupt our inner harmony. And the distant echoes of city life. As you could hear, it couldn't 100% remove the background noise from the TV. However, it was able to successfully address it and lower its volume without affecting my own voice too much. This is still great because this audio now is usable to some extent and it could use some more processing to clear it out completely. So I would say it's still good to some extent, depending on how far I want to go with it. So let's take another listen to this example. And after that, I'll take you through the reasons and why I chose the settings that I chose. So for this example, just gonna be simple within the household. So for example, someone is watching TV in the background or YouTube or something, and it's just gonna a little bit too loud. So I'm just going to be reading something and let's see if it's going to work. Through the ups and flows of life, we encounter various noises that threaten to disrupt our inner harmony. The hum of traffic, the chatter of voices, and the distant echoes of city life. For this one, I chose Broad 2 as the denoising profile. Or for the fact that I considered this as severe ambience, and I only wanted my speech to be primarily picked up, as it was closer to the microphone. I also went over to increase the processing power through selecting double audio analysis mode. The next thing to do was to increase the sensitivity to high in an attempt to form some sort of disparity between the voice signal and the background noise. I also adjusted the width to be at zero so it stays mono as I don't want it to be stereo. This is something you could consider if you want more processing but still no width or stereo output. So here's our next sample. This is from a balcony. Uh, I kind of live in a little bit of a noisy street, to be honest. Uh, there's some birds as well, because there's trees and there's the wind that's shaking the trees, making them move often, and they make this uh, sound. Um, there's cars passing by. There is uh, all sorts of things in here, to be honest. And uh, let's see how well this does. I think this, is, this might be a little harder than the one before, so you'll see. Um, Pro is going to be dealing with this one. To be fair, I think this one is going to be quite tricky, but yeah. So here's our next sample. This is from a balcony. Uh, I kind of live in a little bit of a noisy street, to be honest. Uh, there's some birds as well, because there's trees and there's the wind that's shaking the trees, making them move often, and they make this uh, sound. Um, there's cars passing by. There is uh, all sorts of things in here, to be honest. And uh, let's see how well this does. I think this is, this might be a little harder than the one before, so you'll see. Um, so yeah, let's see what Clarity VX Pro is going to be doing with this one. To be fair, I think this one is going to be quite tricky, but yeah. I chose one of the presets on here and did some editing to bring the recording back to life. As you heard, the voice was a little muffled and lost much of the details in the high frequency. For that case, I minimized the processing that occurred in the high frequencies, and when this knob is turned towards the voice, the processing addresses only the noise in that chosen frequency range and spares the voice supposedly. But it was still muffled, however, the clip could be processed by some EQ to give it some clarity again, and the outcome might still be usable. So here I am recording this now on a highway, like this is legit just so noisy and you could really tell like there's just so much going on right now, so many cars passing by, car horns, um, there's just like the sound of the engines and stuff, some people are just playing music that are really loud as well and um, it's the sound of the asphalt road that's gonna make in a, it's a gritty sound I guess. So yeah, let's see what Clarity VX Pro is going to be doing with this one. So right now I'm in a coffee shop and um, just testing the ambience. There's music playing around me, some people talking, and there's also the sounds of the machines that are in a typical coffee shop, like a coffee machine as well as like sounds of running water and stuff. Um, so I'm very, very interested and excited to see the results of this and know how, how well it's actually going to do anything. Like, 
and treating this audio whether or not it's going to introduce like any artifacts and it's going to see some natural at all if it's going to yield anything usable for the end and for like cost processing or further processing i'd say so yeah there is some loud music playing in the background this is something that could be useful if your headphones are bleeding out any audio or recording vocals or voiceovers. Let's see if Clarity VX Pro is going to be able to separate my voice and the audio in the background. There is some loud music playing in the background. This is something that could be useful if your headphones are bleeding. Let's see if Clarity VX Pro is going to be able to separate my voice and the audio in the background. At the end of this video, I would like to say that Clarity VX Pro did an overall good job of removing the noise for the most part. These examples range from simple and easy to clean, all the way to near impossible to save. Which makes you know that if you have a sample like vocals with some minor white noise in the background or any type of noise in general, it will do a great job without introducing artifacts. The algorithm is successful at separating ambience from speech and dialogue. You might not use this plugin alone to restore and enhance samples of poor quality or environment, but it might serve as a great starting point as it may yield something that you could work with. One last tip, if you have a sample that doesn't have noise all over it and only present in certain parts, you might only use Clarity VX Pro on that portion through automation. Thus, you preserve how organic and natural it may sound through limiting unnecessary processing. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you.